Welcome to the Militia Gaming Community, I'm Trigger, and this video is all about the 1990 Ford Mustang Fox Body and Need for Speed Heat. Let's go! Alright guys, welcome to another Wrong Build video. If this is your first time watching a Wrong Build series, I suggest you go back and watch some of the other ones so you can see how I do this process. But basically what I do is I test every single engine before filming the video so that I can give you at the beginning of the video the best engine for the car. Then we build this car to fit four different types of disciplines, right? We've got track, drag, drift, and off-road. So we're gonna build the car separately for each one of those scenarios. And then of course, we will sum this video up and rank this car amongst the other cars that are in the game and the other cars that I've tested here on this wrong build series. So starting off with the engine, it's the 710 horsepower 3.9 liter V8. Now for the track build, I've got everything set up here. However, we do need to test the gearbox. This is something that I did not test before filming this video. So we're gonna take this car out, we're gonna drive it on Sonic, and we're gonna test this gearbox to see which one is the best. Now, right now, we've got the six speed installed, but I wanna make sure I have one of each. So I've got one of each of the gearboxes, perfect. We're gonna dial in the live tuning as well after we run this through Sonic and see how it goes. All right, so in this test, what we're going to be doing is looking for how the car reacts to these sharper turns and how it feels at top speed. Oh, it doesn't start out super fast, but yeah, it looks like it gains a lot of speed between 160 and about 220. It, it definitely climbs quickly, but I don't know. All right, not a bad turn. Not a bad turn at all. All right, top speed is actually really, really good. It does very well with the top speed. Actually feels okay. Turning at lower speeds. It's not too bad at all. Like I said, it's, its strength is definitely top speed acceleration. And one thing I noticed is that it wants to stay in fifth. It's doing 236 miles an hour in fifth gear. And it still has one more gear in the transmission. It's not even utilizing it. So we're definitely going to have to swap transmissions. I don't feel like this is the right one. All right, we were actually weren't going for a time there. But 244, really not bad. But it's definitely not good either. So we made a few mistakes, definitely, in this one. But I, I do like the way that it's feeling in the lower speeds. It turns fairly well in the in the top end as well. So I'm gonna leave the live tuning the way it is. This is how I had it when I uh, tested it on Arian as well. So if you look at the live tuning, I've got plus two st steering sensitivity and minus one on the downforce, traction control off, dra uh, drift style gas. This is where I'm gonna leave it. This feels the best. This is how I had it when I was testing it on, uh, on a tighter course. It actually feels the same on Sonic. So we're leaving it there. As far as the gearbox is concerned, it was really weird that it did not get up into sixth gear. So it's very strange. It really doesn't want to shift into sixth. It's at 236 miles an hour. It's still in fifth gear, which is really weird. So I'm going to switch to the five and then we're going to run this again. I'll skip to the end so you guys don't have to watch it over again. And we'll see what our time is and see how it reacts. All right, at 242.53, just by changing the transmission, I did drive just a tiny bit cleaner, so that could be part of the reason why I ran a faster time. But I'll tell you what, if you run a five and a six, you never get to that six gear. So why not just run the five? The five actually runs a little bit cleaner. It felt better after the turns. It felt like it picked up a little bit faster. It felt like it had more pull out of the gate. So uh, I'm definitely thinking the five is the way to go on this. The seven speed transmission, which I used in some of my testing of the engines before I started filming, really just didn't feel right in the car. It just kept over shifting and having problems in some of those turns. So I dropped it down to the six and that felt way, way better. So I like the five speed transmission. The six is just overkill. So we're going with the five. Let me show you the build card for the track build. All right, starting off with the engine, we've got the 710 horsepower, 3.9 liter V8 engine. 
you got all Ultimate Plus engine parts with the Ultimate Dual Turbo and the 5x3 pound NOS. Super track suspension, Elite brakes, Elite race tires, Elite Plus clutch, and the super five speed transmission with a super track differential and of course nas duration and nas refills as your auxiliaries now as far as the live tuning settings go let's show you those real quick live tuning is going to be plus two on steering sensitivity minus one on downforce traction control off drift style on gas all right Let's see if we can turn this thing into a drag car. All right, for the drag build, we're gonna drop a one by 15 pound NOS tank in there. We're gonna leave the track suspension, but we are gonna change to a drag tire. Now, if you've watched my videos before, you know the drag build is really not that much different than a track build, but you will need drag tires. This is gonna give you the best acceleration. The other thing that we're gonna need to do is test the gearboxes to see which one gives you a better quarter mile. My guess is that the five or the six speed is going to be the best gearbox for the car, but let's just make sure we have one of each and go outside the garage and test it out. All right, starting with the four speed transmission, let's see what the quarter mile looks like. Oh, also before we take a look at the quarter mile, we need to drop the downforce all the way down. The downforce all the way down, quarter mile 8.63 with the four speed transmission. All right, let's drop the five in there, which is my guess for the best one, but let's just see. 8.57 for the five speed. All right, let's put the six in there and let's see what the difference is with the six and the five. Here we go. 8.57 as well. So the five and the six are exactly the same. Let's drop the seven speed in and the verdict is 8.57. So no matter if it's the five, six, or seven, you're still gonna get an 8.57. So for simplicity's sake, we just keep the same gearbox that we have in the track build and that's the five speed transmission. All right, that's really it for the drag build. Let's go ahead and show you the build card. Of course, we're gonna use the same engine, 710 horsepower, 3.9 liter V8, all Ultimate Plus engine parts with the Ultimate Dual Turbo and the one by 15 pound NOS. Now for the chassis, we're going track suspension, elite brakes, elite drag tires, elite plus clutch, super five speed gearbox, and the super track differential with NOS duration and NOS refills. And of course, the live tuning is going to be steering sensitivity plus two and downforce minimum. Steering sensitivity is not really that relevant for drags, but we put it in there just because. Traction control off and drift style on gas. All right, let's put some tire smoke on this baby and let's drift it. All right, what kind of tire smoke is gonna go well with this wrap? I think it's gonna be orange. I think we should throw some orange tire smoke on there. $10,000 to make my tire smoke orange. Let's also drop some orange underglow while we're at it. Dude, it's gotta have style if we're gonna be drifting it around like crazy. There we go, orange. We just spent $17,000 on underglow and freaking tire smoke. Of course, we need to drop it on air suspension. That's well worth the $15,000 as well. All right, let's take it out and drift it. Oh wait, we need to change it to a drift car. What am I thinking? All right, here we go. So I'm gonna drop it back to a five by three pound NOS, even though I don't use NOS for drift at all. And then we're gonna take the suspension and change it over to speed cross. This is standard for rear wheel drive cars if you wanna drift them. Same with the elite drag tires. We're gonna leave those in there. And then the last thing you wanna change is the differential. You wanna make it a drift differential and preferably the pro drift differential. And that's really the only keys to my rear wheel drive drift setup. And this is a rear wheel drive car. So it should work out pretty well, but let's take it out and see what happens. That looks nice. 
That's my highest one on that one. I don't do it very often, but that's it for that one. This is it. This drift build is sick. I love it, bro. Also, the orange tire smoke was such a good choice. And shout out to Surfy for this dope wrap. This thing is insane. OMG Surfy, bro. Check him out. He's the best Xbox rap artist in the game. And he makes all of my militia gaming raps. All the raps you see in my videos, he's the one doing it. So if you go to the community section on Xbox, you can check out this rap right here. You can download this. It's available. It's in the community section. This is for the uh, Fox body, obviously. Let's get that Militia Gaming logo and then this clean, oh, sponsored by Juicebox, baby. Thank you so much, OMG Surfy. Love you. All right, uh, let's get the build card out. Let's tell you the full drift build. All right, starting with the engine, we've got the 710 horsepower, 3.9 liter V8, all Ultimate Plus parts like always, Ultimate Dual Turbo with the 5x3 pound Ultimate NOS, Super Speed Cross Suspension, Elite Brakes, Elite Drag Tires, Elite Plus Clutch, Super 5 Speed Gearbox, and the Pro Drift Differential. The three keys to this build are the Super Speed Cross Suspension, the Elite Drag Tires, and the Pro Drift Differential. That is what makes a rear wheel drive drift car, and it makes it very easy to control. All right, let's move on. Oh wait, one more thing, live tuning. All right, the live tuning for the drift setup is maximum steering sensitivity, minimum downforce, and then traction control off and drift style on gas. All right, let's take this thing off road. Let's get dirty. All right, let's swap it over to an off road build. To do that, we're gonna switch to rally suspension. We're gonna take the elite off road tires all the way over here, boom. And then we've got the uh, rally differential. Super Rally Differential. Not much different than the other builds, but let's give this a try. We're gonna take it out to HCV2 and Rumble, and we're gonna run it, see if we can get a fast time, and then compare those times to some of the other cars that I've tested. Then we'll sum the video up and give you a rank. Here we go, HTV2, let's do it. Oh, spinning wheels. Let's go, let's get some traction. And once it gets going, it's good, but off the line on pavement, it does not like that at all. Baby, this thing ran fast. Oh my goodness, 150 and change. 150.11, bro, that is quick. That is very, very quick. 150.11, that puts it in the top five or 10. We're gonna have to see after we run it through uh, Rumble, but that is really nice. Let's run it on Rumble, here we go. All right, here we go, Rumble test, let's go. Off the line, oh my goodness. Really good. Woo, this baby's fast. Kind of hard to control, actually, because it's not expecting it to be this fast. All right, get with it. We just hit 150 on that straightaway. This thing is a rocket ship in the dirt, dude. Why is that guy going backwards? Bro, get out of here. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? It's rare that we pass that guy before that corner. Even the fastest cars, sometimes it takes the straightaway to pass that car.
What is happening? Oh my goodness. I think we just run a 310. 310.05. And I think without the clipping on that last little section, I think we could have ran it under 310. 310.05. That is going to put this car definitely in the top 10. That is really, really insane. In fact, it might be in the top five. I have to check my ranks. All right, let's give you the full build card for the off-road build. And then we will uh, sum this video up and give you the rank for this car. All right, starting with the engine, it's that same 710 horsepower, 3.9 liter V8. We've got the Ultimate Plus engine parts with the Ultimate Dual Turbo, as always, and then the 5x3 pound NOS tanks. The Super Rally suspension, the Elite brakes, the Elite off-road tires, Elite Plus clutch, Super 5-speed gearbox, and the Super Rally differential. And then, of course, auxiliaries, you can use NOS refills and NOS duration. All right, as far as the live tuning goes, you're looking at max steering sensitivity, minimum downforce, traction control off and drift style on gas. So that is the same live tuning as my drift build, but this thing is amazing in the dirt. All right, let's sum this thing up. All right, to sum this car up, it's actually an okay track car. It's not anything super ridiculous. It's just okay. It has really, really good top end speed. It's kind of slow off the line, but because it runs under a three minute time on Arian, I can't really say that it's a slow car. It actually performs better on Sonic, which is a wide open course. It's got a lot more top speed sections than it does on Arian, which is tighter and has a lot more curves, a lot more turns. So it runs okay. It runs under three minutes on Arian, but it also isn't the best, right? It's kind of somewhere in the middle of the in the middle of the pack for track racing. For drag racing, it's actually decent. It's just outside the top 10 with an 8.57 quarter mile, but it's not anything super special. There's a few cars that can beat it, and it's also not very slow. So if you're online and you're racing friends, um, you can probably win a few times, that's for sure. As far as drift goes, it actually feels really good to drift. I'm really surprised. It's very, very useful in drifting. You can definite, definitely three-star um, all of the drift sections in the game using this car and using my rear-wheel drive drift setup. Now, as far as off-road goes, this is really where it really shines. It is an amazing off-road car. It sits just outside the top five on off-road. It actually qualified to be number six on my off-road ranking. So this is absolutely crazy. I, I really didn't expect it to be that good off-road. I knew it was good. I've used it off-road before, but I didn't know it was that good. So until we test it, that's what happens. Anyway, that's it for this one, guys. Shout out to all the militia subs. Thank you so much for coming back. Guys, we hit 50,000. I can't even thank you enough for this you guys don't even know and of course i raise a barks to you guys thank you so much for watching trigger out